Hello, everyone. I'm so excited that you are here. First of all, I'm excited that I see you, your lovely faces, because you are lovely people. Um, uh, after having a busy day today, it's really good to see it be in a great company. But I'm also very excited uh, because we have a special night tonight. Um, we welcome to the stage our uh, one of the members, Andrea, who is wearing the brave wings today, and she's going to deliver this beautiful uh, presentation on how to love kids uh, and at the same time while we are angry with them, and she will explain it all. But I'd like to present uh, Andrea. So Andrea is a parenting coach. Andrea supports parents, uh, parents to improve their, their relationship with the children so that they can have a fulfilling relationship. She's qualified coach in neurolinguistic programming, qualified hypnotist and published author of the amazing bestseller book, uh, Chains of Wings On, that tells the story. Um, and originally, Andrea's focus was um, was on women uh, who are in the mentally manipulated manipulated relationships. Until she discovered that her real passion are children, she is on her way to becoming an international speaker who wants to raise awareness that as a worldwide community, we have to change our focus from controlled parenting to conscious parenting. Welcome to the stage, Andrea. Thank you very much, Yolenta, for this beautiful introduction. Good evening, ladies, and thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I'm really honored and grateful to get your attention tonight, and I'd, I'd like to commend you for being here. And I'd like to start with a question. Oh, I have to share the screen, Yolenta. Yes. Can you allow me Go to ahead. share the screen? Yes, I <laughs> Thank did. You. Okay, awesome. Okay. So welcome to tonight's presentation. Who here would like to know how to show your children you love them when in fact they're really driving you up the wall? Hands up if you're with me. Awesome. Thank you very much, ladies. So I'd like to talk to you about why it is important um, to talk about this subject and why I chose it. And um, I'd like to share a story with you, a story that um, I only came to realize through my development journey. Um, it's the story of me being a little girl and being at a friend's house and coming home to my mom, I was supposed to be there at 6 p.m. sharp. And because I was walking home, maybe it took me, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I just arrived a few minutes late. And my mom was expecting me. She was furious because I was late. And in, in her being so angry with me, I, I shrank as a person. I got even smaller and even more little than I was because I would have been maybe six or seven years old. And that stuck with me. And this story came only up with me in within me after I had learned a lot about myself because what it was is my mom, I always thought I had a beautiful upbringing. And I did. I have a beautiful relationship with my mom today but I realized that um, the fact that I left uh, home when I was 18 to go to France for one and a half years and the reason why I migrated to Australia to the other side of the world was actually to escape from the control of my mom and that was an unconsciousness that um, drove me to move away from home and so when I had this realization, I thought, I do not want children to move away from their families because the family is the safe environment where we can protect them. 
And this is why I chose this subject. So, and it's about us. I made the same mistake when I brought my children up because I was in a controlled relationship. Um, we had a business, we just migrated to Australia. We had a business that we had to look after. And very often I was so stressed that I would just explode in anger with my children, which was the worst thing I could have done. So that's why um, I chose this subject. And I wanted to ask you ladies why you are here tonight. I know you're here because you're part of Conscious Leader, but I wanted to however, ask you what you are trying to get out of tonight's um, discussion. And if you'd like, I, I would ask, I would like us to have a conversation rather than just put things into the chat because I think it's uh, bonding us more than um, just typing into the chat. So please feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask and answer the question. Yes, please, Tina. Hi, Andrea. I love this topic and thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm in a situation as a grandmother uh, where I have a controlling mother who is now um, needing care and she is living in the same city as me and I escaped like you many years ago. I've also had a child incarcerated and um, obviously around that there's lots of emotion from you know deep grief and sadness to anger and you know so from my perspective i'm really keen obviously the my son was 18 when this happened so i guess in respect he was not a child by the law um viewpoint but um yeah, this is something I've written about in a book too, but I, I also am constantly coming back to, you know, how my feelings around that situation, what impact I had on him as a parent, given my upbringing and those kinds of things. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, Thank you so much for sharing with us, Gina. I'm so sorry to hear about you but thank you for being so vulnerable and and open with us and i'm sure you are a great beautiful grandmother now to your grandchildren and i know that you are on your journey to to grow as a person as well and you're doing a great job thank you very much is anybody else who would like to share why they are intrigued by the subject if not then we just continue. Um, I'm not going to share each and every slide with you because all I did was just put um, sentences on it. So before I continue, I'd like to just um, do a bit of housekeeping. I mentioned already that um, I'd like you to engage, put a cue into the chat if you have a question or just raise your hand. And can you do me a favor? If you've got a piece of paper in front of you, can I get you to write $1,000 on that piece of paper? Excuse me. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yes. Uh, Shona apparently had a hand up as well. Oh, my apology. I didn't see that, Shona. My apology. Please go ahead. Sorry, that's ladies. okay. I I didn't want to make noise. <laughs> I was happy to wait. You should. Um, You've got all the right to. <laughs> um. Well, I guess I I had my hand up because I resonated with what the topic is, and I guess what you discussed, Andrea and Gina. Um. I too. I moved out of home when I was sixteen, because of the control. Yeah. Um, luckily enough for me and my mother, as soon as I moved out, we formed a better bond. Um, however, I still had to be very selective with what I shared with her because I didn't want to, like, it just used to give her a lot of health problems. And she always used to tell me how much it used to do that. So I kind of stopped sharing <laughs> Wow. So, well, I, there are times I did share, like I, I've been through a fair bit in life, um, probably when it was really bad, 
I would, but not when it was just unnecessary little stuff. <laughs> like, but yeah, I I was selective with what I shared with her because I didn't want to cause any more unnecessary. Um, I guess you know pressure on her. Mm. I'm so sorry, Shona, that you're experiencing that because that's not how it should be at all. You should be able to communicate with your parents whatever you feel like has to be said. And this is part of what we are talking about tonight because when um, parents are angry at us, we make it all about ourselves immediately. We think that we are not worth um it or that it was our mistake that they're angry and and to feel that you're not even able to talk to your mom even as an adult about that is really really sad so sorry for yeah, you thanks I think she um I think she didn't quite learn it well in her life journey um I have a bit of a strong connection to her now still because she's passed away. Um, so I do have a connection with her still. Um, but I think in this connection now, I think she's pretty much, you know, discovering how, um, you know, that next part of her journey, but also um, what she could have done better. Um, and And I get a lot of what like similar reassurance from her um when I speak to my medium so that's really good um yeah so I yeah I let go of all the um unnecessary stuff and because for me I just feel I just don't want to repeat the patterns and I've you know I've looked at myself in where I'm at now from where I was before and oh my goodness there are so many things I'm trying to undo <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's why I'm here that's yeah. why I'm here wow I'd really like to acknowledge you for your awareness and for your courage to take the action and do the work to undo the layers because that's also something I'm going to talk about tonight and this is awareness yeah. that not many people have so I'd really like to acknowledge you for that Shona that's amazing and yeah, something thanks. else that I, something else that I'd like to mention is because you mentioned your mom has passed on already and I know you're talking with a medium but what I find really helpful is to write um a letter where you forgive your mom for everything, you know, every yeah. little thing. And you can do that over and over again as things are coming up. And then yeah. burn this letter, read it out loud and burn this letter in the full moon. Yeah. That has I've such been doing a clearing. That part of my healing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I, I tend to have open conversations too. I like just the other day, I know this sounds really odd, but I I put something out there in my car. I said it out aloud. And mm. then within like less than a minute, a song came on. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's mum. <laughs> like, that's her, oh. you know. Yeah. And so, Beautiful. yeah, I do have a connection with her. And, um, and it's very healing. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm glad you so have thank that. You. Yeah, thanks. Mm. You're welcome. Did I miss anybody else who'd like to share? No. Then I'd like to continue with your little exercise to write down the amount of $1,000 on this piece of paper. And then I'd like you to look at the number and think about the possibility that you might have paid $1,000 for tonight's presentation. Because if you look at how much you have spent, then you get so much more out of it because you're so much more alert and switched on and connected. That was just a little bit of cheek from my side. Thank you, ladies. 
but I do not sell to you, you know that. Um, I just wanted to tease you a little bit, thank you. So the content I'm sharing with you tonight, I might share my screen for this one, just one second, just scrolling down where we are. I'm, oh yeah, let me do the content briefly first. So we are going to talk about um, how to control yourself when you feel the anger coming up. And, and talking about that, I'd like to ask you, do you know the signs when you are angry or when you you feel the anger coming up in your body? Are there certain signs in your body? I know for myself that I can feel heat rise up. I can feel my face flush and I might um, tense my body and all of that will come along with some negative thoughts about the situation. Um, so that would be my cue that I know there is anger rising up. Is there anything you'd like to add to that list, ladies? Yes, please, Yolenta. Okay, so I'd like to add on top of that, it's like um, um, I, have a, I have a feeling that if something is about to uh, blow out of my body. And wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I feel, oh, boom, and I feel, okay, it's a pressure. I can't tap it down anymore. It's either I escape or I'm going to do it. Mm. Okay. And it's good that you have that awareness because if you have that feeling of being to explode, being about to explode, it's great to to do explode for yourself, but it depends on the situation. And we're talking about children. So we're trying to keep that explosion inward in that moment because we can deal with it later on. And Gina, I saw you were mentioning that you felt sadness or you feel sadness you had more you've had more sadness you said and um that makes total sense because sadness is the emotion that's underlying to the anger so when you feel sadness you actually have not allowed yourself to experience the anger yet which is so important and i had to learn that as well yes Anybody else, ladies, who would like to share? Yes, please, Shona. I usually feel it from, you know, the waist up. So sometimes headaches, sometimes um, mm -hmm. just sensitive hearing. Like, you know, um, if things are going on, um, my hearing comes really sensitive. <laughs> I don't know. Um, wow. But yeah. I tend to, I tend to get, uh, I don't know, I get, I get like a shift in my energy, mm. um, maybe like an adrenaline, um, like Yolanta might have been kind of expressing that, like it, that little bit of adrenaline that kicks in when you feel like you're about to explode, but, mm. um, but I try not to get to that. But then, yeah, there'll be the odd occasion where it just sneaks up on me and bang. <laughs> I think you're very sensitive. That's very great awareness. That's Thanks. awesome. You're amazing, Shona. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> no worries. Anybody else, ladies? Yes, please, Anna. Hello. <laughs> I didn't say hello to you yet. <laughs> You have to unmute yourself, please. Oh, there you go. Um, sorry, I had a client and I had to deal with, but um, when I get angry, I get a tremble, tremble in my voice and the adrenaline, like Shauna said, goes through my body and I sometimes get shaky. Mm. Uh, ah, yeah, Shauna says, yeah, that's another one. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Anna, for sharing. So, and then the next thing to do is when we have this awareness and 
it doesn't necessarily have to be in a situation with our children. It can also be at our workplace because we know that um, being angry does not help us. It's much rather to calm ourselves down. And this is the next step that um, we are going through. And there are ways on different ways on how to do that. Um, which I will share later. And then the third step is to reflect on um, what you have gone through. And I'd like to throw something in there in that last step that I heard on the weekend and it resonated so much with me. I did a um, speaker training over the weekend and the lady um, said, a quote, which was, the illiterate of the 21st century are not the people who don't know how to write or read. The illiterate of the 21st century are the people who don't know how to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And I think this is a quote that also fits perfectly into parenting, because when we talk about this cycle of anger that has been passed on from generation to generation, we want to unlearn and then relearn a better way on how to show our children how to deal with it. So this is the third part of what we're talking tonight. I just quickly wanted, I, I know Yolenta has beautifully introduced myself already, but I just quickly want to show you this is me as a daughter. My dad passed away two years ago, unfortunately. My mom in Austria, my beautiful daughter and son, and my granddaughter, she's 11, and my grandson, who is one. And this was me on the weekend at the speaker training with world number one speaker, Cherie Eilertsen. It was amazing. And... You know, this is me as the author, the um, coach who has trained with TCI, other people, and um, I'm do I've done workshops. I had my book launch, and yeah, this is me briefly. And I just want to let you know that tonight's presentation is not about me at all. It is. Um, it is about my mission, my mission that uh, Yolenta shared and um, the shorter version, like short future version of my mission is that I want to support a hundred parents in creating a fulfilling relationship with their children. That's the short um, future, like that, that must happen soon. <laughs> and yeah. So let's continue. Let's continue on our first um, dot point, how to educate ourselves in how we can control our anger. And what I'd like to add to that is um, something that is familiar to all of you ladies, because you are all coaches and really um, well trained. It's the map is not the territory. We are all different. And everybody who looks at this beautiful photo of Sydney has a different impression, different thoughts, different relates to different experiences because somebody like me who grew up in the village years and years ago, I would have been scared by looking at a big city like that because I never have been out of the village that I grew up in. Whereas somebody who is used to the big city life looks at it with excitement. And this is also how we have to perceive interacting with our children. What our children share with us, we want to be very conscious about. We don't just want to act in anger because we want to think, hang on a moment, what is it that my child needs in that moment? What is it that upset my child in that moment? It's not about us. It's about our children. And 
like me, I forgot that. And and in the moment, in the heat of the moment, it's very easy to do, but it's very important that we stop and think of what it means to our child. What have we shared with our child that made our child upset? So does anybody have any instances with their children where they exploded, where they found it hard to control themselves? I'm sure everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Paula, please. Yeah. Um yeah, I've I used to explode incredibly. <laughs> and um well my mine was because I had postnatal depression also. And so mm. I didn't, I had no, no way, I didn't, I never learned how to, um, how to control my emotions until I was coached. And then mm. I learned, and then I could control myself. So yeah. I used to run away and I used to leave the house when I realised, and then when I realised that what I was actually doing, I was actually teaching my child, my son, then to run away from his emotions and to run away from what he was, what he was, um, what he was feeling. So I stopped. And mm. now it's totally different now because I'm aware of my emotions and I'm aware of what I'm doing and how I'm expressing myself. So for me to be a, to me to be able to teach my son and teach and be a model for him, I've had to control my emotions and take a back seat so that I can put him in the front seat and realize that he is very important and it's important for him to learn that he needs to control his emotions and not fly off the handle because kids learn from us so much so yeah thank you so much paula and i know that you have come such a long way and i'd like to ask you one question what would you say made the difference in you having a different approach now well the difference is that i'm closer with my son now i only have one son i only have one child and having just one child is completely different to having well that's what, i don't know any different but i would say that it would be completely different having one child to having more than one because I'm his mum, I'm his sister, I'm his I'm his everything. Do you know what I mean? So the difference is giving him the space to come to me so that he can share things with me. And that's yeah. been the that's been the biggest difference because I take I don't take a back seat. I give him the space. And I think it's important to be able to give our children the space to be able to think and move away from us rather than us being on top of them. And that's one thing that I learned in, in that time when all my emotions were all over the place was give the child a bit of space. Don't keep at them all the time because... They don't know how to control their emotions. And if you don't know how to control your emotions, then you're teaching them that they that they are not able to control their emotions. And, you know, it's where they're models, where they're role models. So absolutely beautiful. Give a child its space. I love it. Thank you, Paula. Right. But what I really meant to ask was, is it just because you got older that you have this knowledge or what made you come up with this different approach? What made you have a different um, awareness? Could it be? I think it, it was. Education? I think it was the awareness that was given to me. 
that okay. I, I was I became aware as I got coached because yeah. I've I'm from a my mother is still around she's 90 years old and she's still very oh. controlling and I don't want to be that mm. so I don't want to be controlling and pass on that generation to him yeah. so that's been the the biggest awareness for me Yes, thank you so much for sharing. So what you're really saying is if you were not coached, you wouldn't have had this awareness. And, no. and isn't, yeah, and no, isn't it amazing I'm... from, I mean, Gina, Shona, you, me, so many of us have been controlled in our childhood. Isn't it amazing? Don't you agree with me that it's really time to break this cycle? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Shona, you've got your hand up, please. I loved all of that, um, Paula. <laughs> I resonated whole, wholeheartedly. But to add from that, I do, I've got three kids. So um, my youngest is four and my eldest is 13. And I'm finding it really hard to undo the 13-year-old. Um, but I'm still doesn't mean I'm going to stop. I'll keep going. Um, same with my nine-year-old. Um, I'm doing the patterns. My little bit of background is that I grew up with a single parent. Um, so she took on the father and the mother role most of our lives. Um, so. I felt um, like I suppressed my emotions um, for the sake of her, but also for because I didn't really know how to process them. <laughs> and like you, Paula, I had to get coaching. And as soon as I started getting coaching, I started recognizing the patterns and how to break free from that. But I've got like three of them and it, like if, if it's not one, it's the other or it's the other and it's like, okay, mm. we've got fires going on in the house, <laughs> you know, like, um, but it, I've learned to do a lot of breathing um, and a lot of like meditation exercises so I can kind of like not, not, not process it, but also just be able to breathe and not feel the anxiety that I would feel because mm -hmm. I used to get like really sharp pains in my chest um, when I couldn't um, express my frustration <laughs> so I've had mm -hmm. to learn how to not only deal with the anger but the anxiety um, as well so there I, I don't think it's going to be a magic pill fix. It's got a lot of, I've got a lot of work to do here. Um, I I love how you turned Paula, the whole switch from me to we. And I think that's super powerful um, mm. moving forward, you know, like I'm still learning some things. I'm not perfect. And I will probably from time to time, the anger might creep up Um but I'm getting better at dealing with it. Um, mm. and, 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 you know, the aftermath as well, um, being okay with saying, you know what, I didn't handle that right. I'm so sorry. I could have handled it a lot better. Do you want to tell me how that might look Amazing. for us? You know? But, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> You are doing an amazing job, Shauna, really an amazing job. And you have so much awareness at your young age already. I wish I had that when my daughter was 16, when I had left my marriage, because I didn't have that awareness at all. And, and sometimes I felt so helpless and so lost. And all that I had left was to have faith. There were nights where I didn't know where my daughter was she just wouldn't tell me and all that I had left to do was pray and and say to God or the universe 
it's beyond my control. Please, I put her in your care. Please make sure that she's coming home safe again. And that helped me immensely because that kind of relieved my anxiety. Otherwise, I would have had sleepless nights one after the other. And this is also why I'm in, in parenting now, because I'm aware of all the mistakes that I have made. But at the same time, I'm really proud that even though I've made so many mistakes and I have put my children through so much, I still managed to have an amazing relationship with both of them, my son and my daughter. And um, I noticed that as I'm healing myself, um, I'm also healing my children, even though they're adults today. And it is the same for you, Shona. Of course, you will have moments where you you erupt like a volcano, but you are doing the right thing. You're talking with the children afterwards, explaining why. Because let's face it, you are a human as well. And we all need to um, let go sometimes. So amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Did anybody else would like to say something, ladies? No? Okay, then let's continue. Elizabeth put her hand up. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Well, please actually, Elizabeth. actually, I want to say, so my mother was divorced, actually, and I was from first marriage, then remarriage, but uh, she gave us freedom. My grandmother also used to say, whatever you do, be responsible for. So we had a freedom, actually, of thoughts and behavior. So I introduced the same to my children. I have two daughters, big uh, gap of the age, because I have a, a, a H negative, so I couldn't, I lost a pregnancy view. So, yeah, and I did that. I discussed with them whatever was needed. We sat to the round table and we discussed. But somehow, I didn't win. Both of them finished uni. They were very responsible for the uh, schooling uh, things. Maybe the youngest one was more loose, sort of like she likes to live her own way. And I only used to tell her, wherever you think is better for you, do it and you will see results. If you don't care about your clothes, that's fine. Then you will run out of them and we won't afford. With the oldest one, I support her more financially and uh, look after her with the, uh, everything. And she was spoiled. So uh, there you are, you can win. So first was spoiled and uh, she's really dependent still in a way, but, uh, even as I said, professional both. And the other one, um, she has something inside her against me. And she tried to upset me, but I learned so many tricks with the patients because I was a nurse working with different kinds of people. So I just smile and say, whatever you take, if you're upset with me, fine. If you don't want to talk, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, you never can win, actually. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, Elizabeth. And I agree. I have um, used that approach with my children as well. I always said to them, if um, they did not accept what I uh, tried to advise you to do, and they said to me, no, I'm doing it my way, then I would always say to them, okay, do it your way. It's okay. But like you, you are responsible for whatever comes after. Don't come to me and say, Oh, why didn't you warn me? Mm. So they learned that lesson very early on as well. And um, I wouldn't even say your younger daughter, was it the younger one who you said is the against young, you? Uh, yes, she is. Yes. She is. It's a jealousy I, between them because I was taking care yeah. more about the oldest one, I think. It could also be just a rebellion. She could just maybe rebel against you because... What happened um, between my sister, I have a sister as well, because of the control from our mother, I turned out to be the people pleaser because I wanted to do everything right so that I would um, avoid conflict. I just did never want conflict. And so I turned out as the people pleaser, whereas my sister is the total rebel. She always rebelled against our mother 
and she always blamed my mother for everything that happened in her life, even in her adult life. And I don't know, because she lives in Austria, I don't know if she has awareness of that now or not. I know the relationship is better between my mom and her now that my dad is gone, but I don't think she has learned her lesson fully yet. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, Elizabeth. You are an amazing mother. <laughs> okay, ladies. And then um, step number two is how can we calm down in that moment where we feel the anger come up and reflect? What would you say is a method for us to, in the moment of the heat, to calm down and you know, like imagine, for, for me, for example, it would be imagining a glass of muddy water on the bench and taking the time to, in my mind's eye, watch the water settle down. And so as I watch the water settle down in my mind's eye, so would my emotions and my heartbeat and everything would slow down. What do you think could be an approach, another approach for that? Do you have any experience with that? Or what would you do? Pause. Yeah, Gina is saying pause, breathe, absolutely. Stop and breathe. That's always a very good um, suggestion in that moment. And because when we breathe, you all know this, ladies, we connect our head with our heart. Yolenta says, pray. Yeah, absolutely. Christina says, remove yourself from the situation. Yes, that's a very good strategy as well. So you could just take yourself out of the situation, walk into a different room and wait until you can feel yourself calming down. Great suggestion. Thank you. Did I miss anything in the chat? Staying in the other person's shoes. Absolutely. Um, Gina said that as well, along with the breathing. Reconnect with your heart space. Absolutely, Shona. Um, yeah, wonderful. Something else. Shona has a share. Please go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I looked at the chat and didn't see your hand. Shona, you are muted. We can't hear you, please. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. I must have been on me uh, on volume and then muted myself. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that at work, when I was at work, um, there would be a lot of times where I'd be faced with really uncomfortable <laughs> conversations. But I think the more that I have them, the easier that they're starting to become. But there are some really, really, really bad ones like that pop up from time to time. And um, I found that in those moments, I just, just, I felt like I would just kind of be out of my body and just witness what, what's going on and not react. Um, and then just, you know, I guess process it. Um, if I, I guess if I needed to get off the phones or step away from people, I would go to the bathroom and spend as much time as I needed in a in a stall <laughs> um, without feeling embarrassed. And then working, I guess, out a game plan as to how to have that connection better resolved because um, I mean I know that sometimes you can't respond straight away but I find that when you're being um, not so much well it's kind of like threatened um, yeah. you're in those moments where you feel the threat come up um, and you could fight flight or freeze so I kind of freeze in the moment 
step away um, for, you know, and breathe and then return with a plan of action because I feel like when I don't resolve things, I'll end up thinking about them over and over again. Um, so I have built a strategy where I would let my boss know because most of the time it's her that does it um but like can we have a chat and then we'll you know have a chat and I'll say I think you've forgotten that I you know I'm a little bit more less direct <laughs> than mm. you and what you're saying can come across very harmful um and yeah I I did pull her up once because she was saying one thing and doing another, um, which I couldn't understand. It was confusing me. So I asked her the questions and then she actually ended up apologizing to me because um, she was saying to me that she trusts me and that she's made a good decision, but then acting out in front of everyone like she hasn't and it confused me and um, so, yeah, I had to clarify that and then um, let her know that it kind of upset me because, and then my tears would come out. But mm -hmm. I think that also made her aware of, of my boundary, you know, like I'm not saying that I don't, I, I want to obviously not be crying all the time, but I also don't appreciate um not having a, a pleasant converse you know like a better conversation like there's always a better conversation to have right yeah amazing thank you so much Shona and Christina is saying yeah well done Shona on um, noticing the bad behavior and calling her out on it that's really good and also something you shared is um, your boss made you conf uh, made you feel confused and this is also what happens to our children when and the other thing you shared were boundaries so when we are angry with our children we actually teach them um we, we are actually invading their boundaries so we teach them the wrong thing about boundaries so well done thank you so much yeah and um there's one slide um, that I wanted to share with you, which you all know about. So in the moment when we are angry and we we give in to our anger, we actually um, are below the line because we are responding to our emotions immediately. Whereas if we step back or take ourselves out of the situation, like um, all of you have shared, then we are above the line and this is um, where we are um, re um, responsible. Yes, and then the third, um, uh, I've inserted client testimonials, I skipped them anyway. And the third step is to deconstruct the parent's mind. And what I mean by that is what I shared before with you, about the people who are can you all see me or is it my internet dropping out because i can't see you all can you hear me ladies yes we can hear and we can see you i do oh, okay okay that's good thank you so much elizabeth <laughs> yes so when i said deconstruct your mind um i meant what i shared before that who says that the parenting that we have been taught so far was the perfect approach? Because how is it possible that, according to UNICEF, 100 million children live on the street? How is it possible worldwide? And the number is growing. So if our parenting was the way to go over the last decades or hundreds of years, how come this figure is existing today that's what i'd like to challenge you and in my opinion we really have to undo what we have learned and to do that is we have to peel our layers and i know that all of you beautiful ladies oh 
I haven't shared the screen. I know that all of you beautiful ladies are doing that because you are interested in your self-development. And what you're doing is you are unpeeling the layers from the abstract self that you have been taking on through all the conditioning. You are peeling one layer after the other to get through to your authentic self. And this is why I said in reels that I've done or in videos that I've done, it is not the children who have to learn because the children come into this world knowing more than we know. They have more wisdom than we do because our wisdom have been, has been buried through all the layers that we have put on over the years. And so this is the work that I'm doing with parents and it's creating awareness of what needs to be done. In my opinion, the children are not to blame for the way they are. The 14 year old who is hijacking a car and going on a joyride is not to blame for what he's doing. It's his parents or her parents because they haven't learned their lesson. They have not learned to undo the continuous cycle that has been happening in their family line so far. And this is why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. And I don't know if we have got time. It's already seven o'clock. I would have prepared um, a meditation. I don't know if we want to do that or if we want to stop now, ladies. It's up to you. <laughs> you tell me. We have lost somebody already. Shona is gone. I am for meditation. Shona had to go. Uh, she apologized, but uh, she really okay. loved it. And there are kind words in the chat here. And Christina also said she had issues with her internet. And okay. uh, she also says she had to jump out. And she thank you, Andrea, for beautiful. And Anna has to go as well. So... Anna, if you have to go, thank you so much for being here. I hope you got something out of tonight. Yes, really thank you, think. Andrea. I did. I, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Anna. Thank you for being here. And I don't know for the rest of you ladies, are you up for a meditation? Yes? Okay. Um, Yolanta and Paula, you might know it already, but I have tweaked it a little bit. So if I can get you to close your eyes and fall into your seat. Feel how your neck is relaxing, how your shoulders are dropping. Put both your feet on the ground and feel how they grow roots into the ground and how your whole body is relaxing. And then I'd like you to take a deep breath in, into your heart, and out where you let go of the day. Just repeat that two more times. In, into your heart, and out letting go of the day. Breathing into your heart, and out letting go of the day. And now I want you to imagine yourself being in a white room. And in this white room, you are creating anything your heart desires. As you are standing there in this white room, you notice a door. And as you look at the handles of the door, the door slowly starts to open. And as the door opens, you see a figure standing there. It is a mother. And as this mother starts walking towards you, you realize that it is your future self, the mother that you always have dreamt to be. And she holds a presence and you feel her as soon as she enters the room. You feel her energy getting stronger and stronger as she's walk walking towards you. And you notice the posture, the posture she holds. 
you notice the expression on her face, what her hair looks like, her skin, what she's wearing. And she stands now in front of you and looks at you. And she looks into your eyes, almost as though she's seeing directly into your heart and your soul. You know her and she knows you. And as you're looking into her eyes, she starts to share something with you. She says something that you need to hear as a mother right now. Every word she's sharing with you is connecting to every part of your being. As you allow the words coming into you, notice the sense of belief about she's telling you about your and your children's future. By putting her hands out to you, she invites you to come closer. She asks you to give her a hug. And as you're giving her a hug, you feel every part of her energy reaching you. And in that moment, she asks you to step into her so that you can experience what it is like to be in her body. What it's like to be the mother who has an amazing relationship with her children. So you decide to put your foot into her foot, your other foot into her other foot, your knees into her knees, your waist into her waist, your shoulders into her shoulders, your arms into her arms, your neck into her neck, your head into her head. And as you're stepping into her body, you feel her blood rushing through your veins. You feel every single component of what it feels like to be in her body right now. You notice her thoughts. You notice what she believes and things and what she has gone through to be where she is today. You notice what her beliefs are about people around her, who she is as a mother. You notice her looking back on all the things she has accomplished, all the things she values, all the things she has been through. And you start to look through her eyes and you see the world the way she sees the world. You start to feel her heart and what she's most passionate about. You feel into everything and everybody that she loves. And you feel the love she has for her children and what she does for them in this world. You notice what she believes about her and her family's future. What she believes about her present. What she believes about her past. And as you are connecting to every fiber of her thoughts and what she has experienced in her life, of all the people who have connected to her, of all the lives she and you have changed, Allow yourself now to start breathing through her nose, to hear through her ears. Allow yourself to go through what other people have shared with her, the compliments, the praises, the appreciation, acknowledgements, the admiration, the significance all the beautiful things that she has experienced because she decided to be who she is in her core, who she always was supposed to be, because you decided to be exactly that. And now you start to breathe in through her nose together and you relax. Take another deep breath in and out. And take a final deep breath in 
and gently open your eyes and breathe out. And I want you to take this with you when you go to bed tonight. This beautiful mother that you are and that you always were supposed to be. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank, thank you, you, Andrea. That was beautiful, very relaxing. Uh, and thank you for the whole night. Um, I think we've all enjoyed it so much. So I'd like to thank Andrea for, for this presentation and um, say goodbye to everyone who stayed till the end. Thank you very much, ladies, to you, thank to you. giving me your attention, to engage with me. Thank you so much, Linda, to allow me to uh, use your space to do this presentation. And I wish you all a beautiful night, ladies. You are all amazing moms. I'd like to say that uh, this is our space. I created this space for us to um, to mingle, to share, and to to become who we want to be. So, you know, to grow into something we want. I know everyone on the side has their own environment. And this is the place where we can train and, and see the impact before we go into the, you know, to the our groups and, and share our knowledge. So I invite you all to uh, to step in and wear those brave wings and, and share with us what you have. Uh, because it's beautiful, uh, it's beautiful to to learn more about you, and, and it's like being on a journey. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's Thank you. beautiful. I love the space you've created, Yolanda. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel very calm and relaxed now. That's good. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to feel like. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great two weeks. Yeah. Bye. You too. <laughs>